Hi and welcome to Worldwide Canadian. I'm Tim Clark. Today I'm continuing my series on electric vehicles and delving into the topic of charging. When and how much? Stick around. So the first thing I had to consider when I was ready to look at electric cars was how I was going to charge them. For some, the only option is to go to your local charging spot around your house and charge your car, but that makes it both more expensive and less convenient. Luckily, like about 75% of owners, I live in a single family dwelling and I could invest in a charger. I looked at all the brands out there and settled on Flow. It's a Canadian company and they build them to be great for our cold Canadian climates. I did look at several others, including another Canadian brand called the Grizzly, e, but I found a brand new Flow charger online for sale at half the normal cost, which had never been installed or used. It turns out that the person had bought a car and got the charger along with their car, but they couldn't install it at their residence. The person was happy to charge me $340, and I set about learning about what was required to install it. I put all my funds and equipment together and with the help of my electrician friend I was able to get the unit installed on a 40 amp double pole breaker and a 70 foot cable of expensive electrical cable that could handle the load that the charger required. You might think with that all done I had solved all my problems but it was only the first step of many. While the install was perfectly easy now the question was just how much and to what level should I charge my car. The information that I found doing my looking on the internet was anything but simple. In fact, there were lots of opinions out there and none seemed to be that definitive. GM themselves have taken some of the guesswork out to some degree by ensuring a small buffer at the top of the battery and also a buffer at the bottom of the ba battery. However, I did not just want to rely on my ignorance about the topic. I set out to learn why batteries last longer if you know how to treat them. It seems lithium ion batteries don't like to be kept at too high a state of charge. So I stumbled onto a YouTube page that was by Dr. Ewan McTurk, an electrochemist, who has many videos online. His YouTube page is Plug Life Television, and I'll link to that in the description below. He explained exactly why, and he says it has to do a lot with technical things, and I don't really need to cover those again here. You can go watch his videos if you want all the details. But he suggests keeping the battery in a range of between 20 to 30 percent and as much as 80 to 90 percent and only charge to 100 percent when you're leaving to go on a long trip and need all that range. What this did was simplify my plans on most days. You see, I don't charge at all most days. I drive very little except for Mondays and Wednesdays. I do make that 400 kilometer round trip to the city of Halifax, so I do a full charge. My Bolt and most EVs allow you to set the time of your departure and the charging limit and it will finish just in time for you to leave to go on your commute. I just have to plug in the car the night before when I'm done driving for the day and it will take care of all of the rest and so far it has never failed me. Now this summer I drove further on trips to Cape Breton and I did find I could charge again while I was somewhere in the middle of my trip. For these charges though, I use the DC fast chargers. Now the rule for me was to arrive when the battery was between 15 and 20 percent and only charge up to about 80 percent as that was the fastest and most cost efficient way to do it. I also had to know how far I needed to drive before stopping and there's a great app out there called a better route planner and there's also built-in software in the car. It allows me to plan before I leave home and know where I need to stop and how long to charge for when I arrive and to also allow me to arrive at my destination with the amount I told the software I wanted to have left in the battery when I got there. So it all worked flawlessly for me and I had a great vacation. Of course, my time isn't strictly scheduled and if there was someone on a charger when I arrived, I had a backup place or I could just wait if I wanted to. I only found one place in Monastery, Nova Scotia where I had any real issue at all. The rest of my steps were trouble free and my 550 kilometer one way trip was very relaxing and without issue. I'll tell you in a later video though about how to actually pick out the chargers and pay for charging while you're on the road. But for me, I found charging to be one third the cost of the gasoline for a comparable trip. So it made it very cost effective.
Well, with all of the investigation I found on the internet and the tools that I found, uh, it made the ownership of my EV in Nova Scotia very easy. I remember back about six years ago when Nova Scotia Power announced that they were installing just 12 DC fast chargers around the province, and I think at the time it was great, but now there are a need for more to be installed because uh, the number of cars on the road is starting to increase. And the fact that I don't go very far on a weekly basis, this isn't an issue for me, but it doesn't make it easy if people are trying to make the decision to buy electric vehicles. Well, that's it for me. Thanks for watching this episode of Worldwide Canadian. I'm Tim Clark. I'll see you here next time.